today's video, we're going to break down how you can design your life. Now, you've probably set goals before. You've probably built out vision boards. You've probably done all of these different things. I'm sure you're not new to this. So in this video, I want to give you a new perspective. And the way we're going to do this is I'm going to share some of the best coaching questions that I've discovered that I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on to be able to change my own life. And I'm going to share it with you here in this video. So I would recommend that you grab a pen and paper, maybe open up some notes, start to jot some things down as we go through this process. Because really, the biggest thing that I found when I was trying to create the life that I wanted, I wanted to travel the world, I wanted to make money online. In the beginning stages, I was trying to do more. And I realized after about eight months to a year of trying consistently and doing more that I was making no progress whatsoever. So I had to question things to really see, okay, well, I want these things. I've done the goal setting. I've done all of these things. And I was starting to question, like, why are these things not really happening for me? And the reason was I had not changed my identity. I was the same person, same mindset, everything around that. And I was trying to get more. When in reality, to get more or to have a different reality, we need to change who we are. We need to shift into a new person to be able to embody the identity of the person who has the thing that we already want. Now, if this doesn't really make sense so far, just stick with me. We're going to break all of this down in this video because the way I see all of this is that the life that we live is a game. The more that you start to see it this way, the funner life gets. So this is the way I view it, okay? We're in a game and we have the ability to create our character and therefore create the life that we want. So like, let's say we kind of look at this whole process when it comes to designing your life as a character design inside of a game, right? You start up the game, if it, maybe it's a single player game, maybe it's a first person shooter and you design your character attributes that they have. Maybe you have like a hundred points available and you have to allocate things towards the certain attributes that you want to have. You start to design for how you look, how you act, how you behave. And this is the same thing when it comes to life. And this belief has really served me well because now I can start to create the life that I want by changing my character, by adjusting my attributes and gathering skill sets and traits to really be able to create the life I want. Because the change happens in our external reality when we first change internally, which is the character. So I'm excited to get into this one with you. We're going to talk through the identity shift. We're going to understand where you currently are and then design the character that you're going to create to really be able to create this new life and this new vision. At the very end of this video, we're going to share the number one thing that some of the highest performers in the world use when it comes to identity that helps them get incredible, outstanding results in a short space of time. And this is used by people like Kobe Bryant, by Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm going to share it with you at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around for that. So overall, really the first thing we want to think about is we're trying to design our life, but we're starting with the character, right? Because the character creates the life. Okay, so let's just run with that for now, and we'll break this down further as we go through this video. So this requires an identity shift, an identity shift within the game of life. Okay, so if we understand the game of life, and we understand that to first get something, we must be something. When I was trying to quit smoking five or six years ago, I had to go back and I kept, you know, going back to smoking. And even when I changed my environment and even when I did all of these things to really stop the habit, I still continued to do it. But it was only when I stopped identifying as a smoker was when I actually stopped smoking. So this is really the power of identity, right? Because who we identify as dictates everything that comes afterwards. Okay, so if we're trying to create a new reality, we're trying to create a great, great life for ourselves, then it makes sense to first start with the identity and then build from there because the, the actions, the thoughts, the behaviors, everything follows from there. So that's a couple of examples and we'll dive more into that as we get into the rest of this video. But let's break it down, okay? So when we understand the game that we're playing and we understand that we need to identity shifts, the first thing you need to understand where we currently are right now. It's very, very important. And this comes from knowing thyself. Right, So knowing thyself is a quote from Socrates. And this is really one of the most important things when it comes to your own personal development is knowing who you are, okay? Because you have different skills, qualities, attributes that other people do not have. And the people who are the most successful in the world lean into the things that they are extremely, extremely good at. Now, of course, skills can be developed and you can get very, very good at something. But there's some things that you're just a little bit better at than other people. And you probably don't even recognize them within yourself because they come natural to you. So this is the first thing that you need to do is explore what those things are because you have some incredible, incredible attributes, but you probably don't even recognize what they are. So first of all, it's understanding what they might be, okay? And some of the ways you can do that is looking at your archetype. So your archetype is right really kind of your character. There's a Myers-Briggs test. If you go to 16personalities.com, this is a good kind of uh, introduction to these types of things where you can understand a little bit more about yourself based on your archetype, right? It's, a, it's an interesting one. You definitely want to check that out. Also, if we look at human design, 
So human design is really going into the DNA of what's in us, right? It goes into spirituality, it goes into astrology and all these different things. So we won't go too deep into that right now, but if you want to explore that, we'll break that down in other videos. But human design, if you go and you, and you start to look up some things like this, to be able to understand more about your DNA and who you are based on the date you were born, the time you were born and things like that. So even if you're not into these types of things, this was shared with me from a mentor who's multiple seven figures a year. And when he mentioned it to me, I was like, okay, cool, he's probably something here. So I went and I checked it out and it helped me understand more about myself. This is obviously something that some of the top performers and the most successful people do in the world. So I would definitely recommend to keep an open mind when it comes to these things, understanding more about human design and archetypes and everything like that, okay? So that's the first part. Also, look at what pisses you off. Right. So what pisses you off in other people? Because when you understand what pisses you off in other people, then you start to understand some of the qualities that you have within you as well. Now, this is kind of getting into the shadow self, which we're going to talk about in other videos. And, and, I, and I do have a longer video to be linked somewhere around this video if you want to do if you want to check that out after this video. But really what we want to understand is the things that we see in other people are also present within ourselves, okay? This goes for positive traits and also goes for negative traits. So if you see somebody or you recalter somebody, and just things that really piss you off about them. It's likely that you have those traits within you as well. Now, that can be a bit of a hard pill to swallow, but it's the first step to really understanding more about who you are as well, okay? But this also goes for positive traits. Because if you ever look at somebody and you're like, wow, I would love to be like that person, you have those traits within you as well. There's probably just a part of you that hasn't actually allowed that to come to the surface. And this is really what we're tap tapping into when it comes to creating that superior self. Because... You're not just changing completely who you are, right? Change is probably not the best word there. Really, the word shift is better because you're going from who you are into more of who you truly are, which is someone who is limitless, someone who is far more capable than you give yourself credit for. And that's not just me hyping you up. That is actually the reality. You showed yourself multiple times in your life that you are capable of far more. We just need to tap into more of that, okay? So that's another thing. Really, with this whole process, we want to have brutal honesty because when we are honest with ourselves and we're not lying about the things that we have, and we're not lying about the qualities we have or we're not lying about the traits that we have then we can actually start from a place of honesty right and build from there okay so this is all just about knowing thyself next question you want to ask right what does your day currently look like okay, so what time do you wake up what time do you go to sleep and what happens throughout your day how how do you feel about that like how do you feel about your day right now right do you like what you do in the morning do you like your job do you like the business that you have do you like things that are going on in your life on a day-to-day -day basis, would you love to repeat that day over and over again? If you watch this video, it's probably a chance that that's not the case. So you want to look at, well, what are the things that you do not like doing? And what are the things that you could probably remove? And we'll look at that all of that in a minute, okay? But you want to ask yourself that. The next thing then is, if you were to look at your life, if you were to look at your life, yourself, and who you are from a third-party perspective, right? Let's say you do well for a minute and your day that you, we just discussed them a second ago, is, over, is playing over and over again. If you were to really watch over your day as if you were watching a movie, would you be proud of it? Would you be proud of the things that you do? Would you like to watch that? Would you share that with somebody else? Or would you feel shame? Would you feel guilt? Would you feel fear? Or would you feel doubtful? Right? All of these things are good signals of the change that needs to be made. Okay? So you want to be honest with yourself here. The next part is habits. So what habits do you have that are good? What habits do you have that are bad? And how does that lead into the qualities that you have? So this is really about getting an overarching understanding as to the good things that you do that are going to benefit you, that are healthy, that are going to help you become more of what you truly want to be. And what are the things that are actually holding you back? What are the addictions? What are the things that you know you shouldn't be doing? And what are the bad habits that are truly stopping you from tapping into that potential that you have locked up inside of you? Okay, so you want to be honest with that as well. Next part is what are you proud of? So what are the things that you're genuinely proud of? There's definitely been some things in your life where you're like, I am genuinely proud of accomplishing that. This is going to tell you a lot about yourself and what you value about yourself. So be honest with yourself. Find out what you're proud of. Go ahead and write these things down. The very last part of this is, what do you judge in other people? Families can be difficult at times because obviously we love our families, but there's also these different emotions that come up and we do encounter them. So you want to think about what are some of the judgments that I have towards my family members? Or what are some of, the, some of the judgments that I have towards other people? And this is going to be another hard pill to swallow. But the things that you judge in other people are present in you as well, right? Because you are judging yourself. And the only reason that you would feel judged in the first place is because you are judging other people. And this was a massive one for me because I used to have a lot of judgment towards other people. And then I would go out and I would be self-conscious about all the things that I was doing because I felt like people were judging me. When in reality, the only reason I was able to actually understand that I was being judged was the fact that I was judging other people. And the reality was, nobody was judging me. I was judging myself. Okay, so this is an important thing to realize because the things that you judge in other people 
by the things that you judge about yourself as well. So now that we have a good understanding of our current character that we are operating in this life, in this game, now we have a really solid foundation that we can build from to create this new version of ourselves, okay? So let's dive into it. When it comes to the superior self, is what I called it, right? Because we all have a current self, right? We have a, a current self that we operate in. But we also have a superior self that we can step into at any given time. And that is really what we're trying to do when we're designing this new character. Because once we do that, we'll be able to create a new reality. This is the exact process and questions that I asked myself when I was trying to change my life four or five years ago. So the first thing that we really want to look at here is where do you get inspiration from? Like who inspires you? You see that we mentioned a little bit about the judgments that we have towards other people, but this works the same way for positive traits, okay? So who is out there on YouTube or who's out there on TV or whatever it is that you spend your time doing? Who are the people that you look up to? Who are the people that you would say, I would trade lives with that person? Because it's likely that you know these people inspire you for a specific reason so you want to understand why that reason actually is so you can start to embody more of those characteristics and traits because you already have them within you okay so that's the first thing next thing life pillars okay if you've seen some of my other videos you see me talk about life pillars i like to divide things up into seven sections which is the minds the body the spirits relationships network money and business okay so these are the different life pillars so we want to be able to create a vision for each one of these life pillars so that we can find alignment between all of them and really getting clear on these things is going to allow us, okay, well, what do I want my mind to be like? How do I want to be thinking? What do I want my body to look like? How do I want to feel, right? How do I want to be connected to my spirit? What's my beliefs around that? What loving relationships do I want in my life? What's my network like? Who are the people that I hang around with? Do they motivate me? Then what kind of money am I making? How do I manage my finances? And then what's my purpose? What's the business that I'm creating to be able to create freedom in my life, right? These are the different pillars we want to look at. And we want to have a specific vision for each one, okay? So the next one then is designing your day. Because a great life at the end of the day is actually just made up of a series of great days. When I designed what the perfect day looked like for me, I knew that I was living a little bit out of alignment, right? I was doing some things that I wasn't really enthusiastic about doing. And of course, there's going to be hard things that we have to do in the pursuit of our goals. I'm not saying that that's not the case where we're just going to design a day where we're just doing nothing all day. Really, what we want to do is we want to find our purpose. We want to find the thing that we're going to be moved towards, have that in our day. And then I know sometimes for relaxation, for connecting with friends, and just overall, what would be a day that you would live over and over and over again where you're feeling on purpose, you're feeling fulfilled, you're feeling, you know, energetic about the life, the life that you have and you're excited to wake up every day. The clearer that you get on that, the more you can move towards that on a day-to-day -day basis as you start to create this new reality, okay? So having that clear, which it may change over time, and then moving towards that on a day-to-day -day basis based on some of the things you're doing right now. And I originally got this concept from a guy called Frank Kern, which is an online marketer. He has an amazing presentation on this. I'll actually link that in the description below. You'll be able to check out that video. It's a very old video from a couple of years ago. I think it's 10, 12 years ago. It goes into a lot of detail when it comes to designing your day, okay? So the next thing we want to look at is our environment, okay? So what does that look like? Who are we with? Where do we live? And why are we there? So why do we choose to live in this place? Who are we with? Who do we wake up to? Who's uh, spending time with us, right? What kind of friends do we have? It's kind of going into like the relationships and the network side of things. We want to be very clear of what that looks like. If we're going to be spending our time in this environment, we want to be clear as to what that actually looks like. What's the view from your place? How big is your house, right? Do you live in a house? Maybe you live in a van. Whatever it is that you want to do, whatever it is that you want to create, be open and honest with yourself and don't hold back from this stuff, okay? Really go all in. Next thing you want to look at is like, what are the traits, the characteristics? So now we're getting more into the identity stuff, right? We got to see what we want externally, but now we're getting into who is the person that I need to become to really actualize this. And this is where you'll really start to see the gap in between where you currently are in your character traits and the character traits that you need to embody to really make this a reality, okay? So we want to be able to be very, very clear on them. What's the type of person that you need to be? Do you need to be courageous? Do you need to be more confident? Do you need to be free from self-doubt? All these things are going to be uh, very clear indications as to the things that you need to work on and move towards as you form this new identity, okay? So the next thing, yeah, one of the most important is what are the stories that I need to let go of that are holding me back, okay? We all have these stories and mental programs that keep us stuck in life. These are usually based from past experiences, from the way that we were raised, and we pick them up from other people as we go throughout our life, depending on our, our, our surroundings and the people around us, right? So what are some of the stories that this new version of you has let go of, right? Maybe it's limiting beliefs around money. Maybe it's limiting beliefs around what you're capable of. Maybe it's some stories that you tell yourself around why you're not good enough to achieve the thing that you want to achieve. 
these are the things that you want to let go of because this new version of you doesn't hold on to these stories because they are not truth. They are just past limitations and beliefs that do not exist only in your mind. And when you remove those things, you allow space for creativity to create the life that you want. So the next thing then is like, what are the habits that you want to do on a day-to-day -day basis that you know are going to benefit you, your health, your life, and all these different life pillars that I mentioned? What are the good habits that are going to serve you? And then what are the bad habits that you're now going to let go of and start to remove them one by one? Okay. Next one that is presence. So like, how do you feel when you walk into a room? Okay. When you walk into a room and no matter how successful the people are in the room, how do you feel? How do you carry yourself? How do you walk? How do you talk? This is extremely powerful because when you start to visualize who are you when you walk into this room of successful people, like how do you carry yourself? You start to get a clear image of the person that you are becoming. The thing then is gossip. So how do other people gossip about you when you're not in the room? Okay. How do you see other people think of you? And the reason I ask this question is because a lot of the time people aren't spending time thinking about us at all, right? That's the reality. But we think that they are. So if you were to think about when you leave a room, right? And the people talk about you when you're not in the room, what do they say about you? Do they say things like, this guy really has his shit together. This guy is really going after it. This guy is really inspiring me. This guy is really making, making me feel better about myself. This guy is really confident. This guy tells me what I need to hear. It's really getting clear on one of the things that we think other people are going to be saying about us based on what we think about ourselves. This is the key one as well. And the last one then is a tactic or a strategy that's used by some of the highest performers in the world. Cristiano Ronaldo included, Kobe Bryant, all of these people. And it's creating the alter ego. So when you've now designed the superior self, you want to give it a name. You want to give it like an alter ego so that you know that this is the new identity. And at any given time, you can snap into it, okay? I'll give you an example of this. Kobe Bryant, when he was training, when he was up and coming, he was working with this high performance coach. And basically this coach, you know, helped him design his alter ego. So anytime he was in a game, he would snap into that identity. So if we bring it back to Cristiano Ronaldo, back in the day when I used to sport Manchester United, I used to watch all the matches and I could not wait to see him play for Manchester United because to me he was the best player in the world and I just enjoyed watching him so much because he was amazing at what he did. To become one of the best players in the world, he had to first embody the identity of someone who is the best player in the world. He didn't just become it by accident. He didn't just wake up one day and then all of a sudden he was famous and he was really good. He had to first embody the identity because when you first embody the identity, your thoughts, your behaviors, your actions follow accordingly. His alter ego was Ronaldo. He stepped into a game, he stepped into training, when he stepped into anything, he embodied the identity of Ronaldo, right? He wasn't the family guy, he wasn't thinking about anything else except being the highest version of himself when it came to this new identity. This is a good example of what he did to be able to change his life, to be able to step into that new version of himself so that he could perform to his highest capacity. So we broke down a lot in this video. I hope you've written down some of the questions here and start to think about how you can start to create this new character. When you start to see life as a game and you start to see yourself as a character within this game and you can create and change whatever you want in your environment as long as you change internally first, then life becomes pretty fun. One of the key factors for me when I was shifting my identity a couple of years ago, changing my environment and going out and living in new countries was one of the biggest things that had the biggest impact for me embodying this new identity because it was in alignment with the person I wanted to become. So if you want to learn more about how to travel the world, move out of your hometown, and you want to see how I did this in the process that I followed, you can go ahead and check out this video right here, which is going to break down my step-by-step -step process and how I did this so you could remove fear and really go ahead and create the life you want by traveling the world. I'll see you there.